Okay, cool. We're recording. Hello, everyone. Um, this is uh, Justin with the Kansas Socialist Book Club. And as you can see here, we have um, the article, which I hope everyone read, from Kite's Journal, um, Lessons from Beyond the Grave. Uh, right now, we're in between books, and I just want to say that, um, let me go to the assigned reading. Yeah, we had a vote of books other people suggested, and Anuradha Gandhi, um, Theoretical Trends in Feminism, that looks like that's going to be the next book that we read as a group. That's with, like the overwhelming majority of the votes. So that's going to, that is actually, I uploaded it in the resources tab, so you can download that PDF. Um, I thought, well, I figured we'd read like the, what was it, the, um, yeah, right here. The forward and the introduction brings us to about page 19. I think that'll be good for next week. But anyways, um, let's go ahead and get started with this. So, um, yes, yeah, case study of opportunism and a summation of organizing efforts. Does anyone want to summarize the article? Um, I can. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, um, it was talking about this guy's experience with LFK and how they got started. And I kind of noticed some similar things that they did that renters together did, but it's still, um, a bit different. Um, so they got into like organizing and they did start with the masses. So they, like they did talk to real people who had problems in, an apartment complex, uh, particularly with potholes. And uh, it's been going great, but it's just like eventually they kind of, um, they started to focus on individuals, like individual problems. Like they talked about this one lady who um, they encouraged um, with like the help of DSA. I think it was a particularly a DSA person that, encouraged her to take matters to court and so she put like her own money into court and to um i forgot exactly what she was uh, fighting for um but anyway um do you remember justin i think it was um something to do with like her windows not working i'm trying to skip oh, yeah. over it it was it was yeah Several fees. One one of them was property damage, but then there was security deposit that she was trying to get back and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, a numerous, I think, several hundred dollars they said in fees. Wow. Um. So yeah, they encouraged her. They kind of like focused on her and as the individual and, um, yeah, uh, like a DSA person was encouraging her. It was a lawyer. Uh, they he called Tony. Um sinking a bunch of her money into that and eventually um the judge ruled that nobody's going to pay anybody anything um and so they tried to paint it as a win but i mean i guess if you look at it she spent like a whole lot of time and money into this to come empty-handed i mean i guess she didn't have to pay anything but you know um and then what was kind of interesting is like the organization started to focus on becoming more official and becoming more of like a, you know, Tony was encouraging them to become more of a DSA. Um, he called it like a puppet, like underneath the DSA and start other renters together that were under the DSA across Kansas. And it was like, they're focusing on getting a bank account, they're focusing on having, um, I guess more of like a, a voter kind of like with the DSA where you have like member or like chairs who you vote for. And then you have like at large members and stuff like that. And so, yeah, it seemed like it, it was focusing more on becoming, you know, a legitimate org. Um, and it was being used more for, you know, opportunism than remaining with, the masses and with the masses uh, problems and instead of like empowering them, it was just kind of like, how can we use the masses to empower the org in a way is kind of what I got from it. And then eventually it's just like there was disagreements and um, it was just kind of dropped 
like people just stopped doing stuff with the org and it just kind of like died. Mm -hmm. That sounds about right to me. Anyone else think anything about that or, or want to add anything to that? Um, I guess just to add, I know I talked about it already, but it was mostly the transition between the mass organization to the individual efforts that really started the decline in the organization. But then moving from that individual efforts to trying to become like that official, almost like a, I think he said an NGO where they just uh, fund people's, you know, rents, uh, was getting away from the mass line to more of a, you know, yeah, individual kind of, helps. Yes. Um, so it was more like they were running a red charity. In, in a yeah. Respect. Uh, before we go on to the questions I had, there's some terms like specific terms that uh, the author Akio used in this that I wanted to define because some people might not be familiar with that. Right. So opportunism, the formal definition of that, uh, which we got from the glossary of Marxism Leninism at the Red Clarion is the taking of positions or adopting of theoretical lines, etc., based primarily on the likelihood of gaining power, influence, or respect for them. The submission of political will to popularity, right? So I just bring that one up because um, I do think that's important to, to precisely define the phrases that we're saying. Uh, social investigate. You talked a lot about social investigation and class analysis, and I know that Nick and um, Noah... That both of you are familiar, and that's all I talk about, seemingly. But uh, that just ba I mean, you could write, there are whole books about this, but it just basically means going out among the people, um, talking, and, and this is the important part, listening actively and enthusiastically to them by like taking notes, asking further questions, but mostly just listening, right? Um, and, and that's how you get people's thoughts on an issue, and it also involves doing your own research behind the scenes, like up tax records, who owns a building, um, you know, like looking into the economy um, as it relates to Manhattan or wherever you're at, right? That's that's basically what that means. Um, but that's there's a lot more to it. An NGO means a non-governmental organization, so that's like like Nick said, philanthropies, nonprofits, charities, social work, etc. Um, but if you ever see NGO, it just means non-government organization. Um, in this, he men he mentioned the two-line struggle. So basically, uh, to do a very, very brief summary of that, from the new Italian Communist Party, they say uh, two trends are always existing. One of them is pushing onwards while the other one restrains it back, right? Uh, they are the joint effects of the class contradiction and of the contradiction between true and false and between old and new. In some periods, the two trends are complementary and both contribute to the party's development. In other periods, they become antagonistic and incompatible. So basically, in a two-line struggle in every organization, you have two forces, and they're trying to compete. One's trying to hold the other one back while the other one's trying to charge forward. That's, that's what that means in a nutshell. Um, and then what do we mean by contradiction? Um, again, from the Clarion Glossary, it says, the inherently opposed logical extensions or compositions of any given state of affairs. Contradiction is what cha drives change as two or more Incompatible propositions hold sway for varying periods of time and gradually resolve. Example, landlords and tenants, bourgeoisie and proletariat, and so on, right? Um, but again, entire books have been written on that subject, so we're not going to dive into it too much. I just wanted to define it. Uh, any questions about these definitions or any other confusing words before we move on? So... I guess with the two line struggle, mm -hmm. it's it's within an existing organization. So could you? I'm sure you're going to get into it mm -hmm. later. But like, what's the example here with the renters together of uh, Warren? Yes, that so is. Was it? Yeah. No, go ahead. What did you want to say? No, go ahead. Oh, Sorry. Yeah, uh, I would say overall that's actually a discussion question, which we'll get into. But overall, I think it's the um, the 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 conflict and the contradiction between opportunism on one hand and on the other hand, um, I would say a vague, a very vague and, and not that strong, but it was nonetheless there. I guess you'd call it a, a revolutionary sense because um, they, they did. They wanted to go out and organize the tenants and, you know, overthrow capitalism starting in Lawrence, Kansas with the tenants 
<laughs> um, but yeah, that's a good question. What was the two line struggle here? Opportunism and I think revolution, but we'll, we'll come back to that one. Any others, questions? Okay, cool. So discussion topics, right? So the author Akio describes renters together uh, LFK's attempt at a social investigation consisting of uh, meeting up with the tenants, knocking on their doors, and, and asking them to fill out a form, right? And I think we can all agree, and the, I know the author certainly agrees, that that's not the right way to do things. So that raises the question, what does a proper social investigation look like? Um, Akio mentioned, like, to look into the history of like certain areas because it's it's important to get the the opinions of the people he, I think he said um, something along the lines of uh, like it's important to try to get the petty bourgeois or the those people on your side but it's more important to get the the proletariat or the the working class on your side so having that understanding before you start door knocking on understanding what communities you're going into um, is, I would say, something that I took away from the text. Yes, absolutely. That's ding, ding, ding. That's very important. And yes, I agree. Anyone else have any yeah. other things? Yeah, it's kind of like... Um... I don't know, I guess the sense I get with the uh, liberals in electoral politics where, um, and I think other orgs make the mistake of doing this too, where it's kind of like they go to the masses to get them to do something for for them, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you, you want help, well, you have to come out and vote for us. You have to do, you know, fill out this form for us. You have to go do this for us if you're going, if we're going to help you instead of like asking them you know, getting a sense of like where they're coming from, like you said, the history and, uh, you know, what are their thoughts and feelings towards these issues? And maybe even they have like some idea of a solution mm -hmm. to that. Yes, that is the other really important point is that and nowhere in this article did Akio ever once describe anyone asking someone for their thoughts on something. They just shoved a petition, see or sign this. And, like, if I'm a person who don't know the first thing about socialism or activism or whatever, and a bunch of, or, you know, random um, college kids come knocking on, it did sound like the majority were, you know, uh, undergraduate age, and then just came knocking on my door, and I have never heard of them before. And, oh, but yeah, sign this petition. You're probably going to think, like, is this like a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon? You know, because it's the same stuff that they do. Um, so, yeah, making sure that you actually talk to people. Yeah, and it's like if, um, you know, a characteristic of renters is like a significant amount of them is, I guess, a fair thing to say, uh, are low income. They don't have a lot of money. And if you don't have a lot of money, you probably don't have a lot of time either because mm -hmm. you're busy working all the time. And for somebody to come up to you and say, hey, I've got some work for you to do, um, even if it's something towards something you want to see resolved, it's still... I guess, a little bit discouraging, you know? Um, yeah, absolutely. It could, they could even perceive it as insulting. Like, who the fuck are these people? Pardon my French, but who the hell are these people to come up in my neighborhood, in my apartment complex, and try to tell me what's best for me? You know, like, that's... I, I don't think they described that, but, like, I could definitely see that happening, and people who react that way wouldn't be wrong. They wouldn't be wrong, because, yeah, it's uh, exactly... Let's see. Um... So we kind of looking at it here. Uh, so then that raises the question, what does it actually mean to embed yourself among the masses, right? What does that look like? I think it's um like taking the approach that you're not some like outside special org that's here to solve everybody's problems. It's like you were you yourself are like a renter, a tenant who's had poor experiences and um, 
you just kind of like relate to them. You, you share your experiences and you listen to them and, you know, you kind of form um, a relationship and kind of try to build that solidarity that, you know, we're both in this together, that we're both underneath a landlord, maybe not the same landlord, but, you know, we, we're struggling together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the word for that is called solidarity, and that is a huge part of it. Uh, anyone else? Let's see, Hawkeye and Martin. I haven't heard. If you if you don't want com if you're not comfortable or you don't have anything to say, that's fine. But I just want to make sure, like, do you two uh, have anything you want to say? Honestly, I was about to say exactly what uh, Noah just said. Okay, uh, but yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. Um, also, well, never mind. Uh, I, no, go ahead. I go was, ahead. Uh, no, I was just. Um, I don't know if uh, I'll, I'll be able to explain my part to this, but mm -hmm. I work maintenance, and so when you were talking about like canvassing or uh, researching, I was wondering if there was ever an approach to talking to maintenance workers of these apartment complexes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh shit. That is, I'm going to write that down. That is a really good idea. Um, talk to the maintenance workers at, that's a brilliant idea, Martin. <laughs> Love it. Because, uh, Oh, sorry. Ahead, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was going to say, cause I'm sure you guys had, uh, negative experiences with maintenance workers for the, but for the most part, they're on your side. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to make the boss man happy. You know what I mean? But yeah. Uh, and they know the ins and outs of the building, what's going on with the building. Uh, yeah. I just, I think that's a good part of research. That's or a should. fantastic part. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, I know like a lot of grievances with tenants and landlords is, um, that things aren't getting repaired or things are in really right. bad conditions. And, and usually because they just don't want to use the expenses. And so it's like, how do we keep things going until shit hits the fan? And yeah, and sadly, that's how it is with hotels. But yeah, sorry. What? No, yeah. <laughs> it's hard with Discord, like knowing when somebody's going to talk. Um, yeah. But yeah, like also having that other perspective, because like you never know what tenants are thinking. Some can be like, oh, it's these lazy you know, maintenance workers who aren't wanting to come in and fix it or, you know, who knows what they, they are thinking and having that perspective of, you know, maintenance workers saying like, Hey, we would love to fix this. You know, this is what we do. This is what we like to do. And, but the landlord's not willing to, you know, pay us to do it and yes. put money into repairing it. So yeah, and that's a great, sadly, idea. and sadly, like the thing with maintenance workers, most of these apartments only have like one or two guys. And if they were to ever like, push back and be like, hey, you know, safety concerns. Uh, most of the times they just get fired and hire somebody else. But that's at wow. least for the... I've never worked for apartments, but I've worked for hotels, and it's very similar for hotels. It's very scummy. It's, yeah, that's why I got away from it. But mm -hmm. anyway, sorry. No, you're good. This is a very valuable perspective. Thank you for sharing that. Um, on that topic, Martin, I want to ask, like, how, how would, if I'm a non-tenant or something and I want to reach out to the maintenance person of, uh, I don't know, Royal Towers, like, do you have any suggestions how to do that? See, that's what I was trying to figure out. I, I really, hmm. yeah, I, other than like, quite literally, like you would just have to go there and catch them, but I don't know how you would reach out to them other than going through management, and that would be like yeah. they would stop that in. Uh, yes, you know? <laughs> yeah, they would. Um, yeah, so I guess that's another reason we need to get to know the tenants, right? Um, yeah, they yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, just to go back, like you're saying, embedding yourself in the masses is being a part of the masses. Like Noah was saying, the being uh, just to understand their struggle is important. Solidarity is always important, but if you're, say, like Martin, a maintenance worker, you're a part of, you know, a group that said group. If you were someone living in an apartment building, you're a part of that mass, you know, you're a part of that group. So to embed yourself into it, I'm not saying we should all move out of our places and <laughs> m 
live in the apartment buildings because that makes us a part <laughs> of the masses. But uh, in the sense, the best way is to have that experience of being there. So the get in touch with these, you know, uh, maintenance workers is to be, you know, a renter ourselves and to contact them, you know, through our property managements. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is also a really good point. Um, one more thing I wanted to get here. Um, sorry, I'm trying to move it along because of the time crunch. But so Akio also outlines an error about expanding too soon into different apartment. You know, they said, oh, we, we got our potholes filled. Now let's move on to the next one. In particular, one that he describes was the West Hills complex. I don't know if you remember that one. So I want to ask, like, why is that bad? You know, isn't bigger always better? And, and you know, don't we want to grow? I've got an answer, but I don't want to take up all the time. Uh, you can go ahead. I was just going to say, like, well, what was I going to say? Um, it's, like, tempting to just go out there and, like, find all the worst apartments and, like, talk to them. But, um, yeah, relationships is really important because if you're just going to go to a place and, like, you know, do something for a little bit like the potholes and then leave, it just kind of seems like you're using them for something, you know. And then mm -hmm. now that you're done with them, you just kind of, like, drop them and... Mm -hmm. Leave them, drop them like an old toy, or yeah. I think of like the Toy Story or the <laughs> dropping Woody. I don't want to play with you anymore. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. That's that's a really good way to put it. Nick, did what did you want to say? Um, I was gonna say so. The problem that they really struggled with was what we were talking about earlier of having um, poor surveying, uh, not understanding the conditions of mm -hmm. the the West hills apartments because they were like he said in the article they were different conditions the the first apartment complex they were at were more working class people uh, lower income but this west hill where the the apartment buildings were you know not terrible but they were still in pretty good shape there were he was saying some potholes but not really enough for anyone to complain about so he didn't really they kind of tried to force themselves into the conditions force you know the the West Hill group to get angry about conditions that they really didn't have any complaints with. Mm -hmm. So it it's easy to look at all these apartment buildings and be like, oh, we need to organize every single apartment building, but you can't organize the organize them if they're not ready or they don't see an issue with their their landlords. Yes, yes, that is exactly right. They didn't do a proper investigation, and therefore, he it, it, it said it said characterizes like a petty bourgeois kind of professional class character. Uh, that way, that's that's what we mean. That's class character. What that means is like the now. Granted, the, the, every individual is unique, and sometimes you even get a rare you know bourgeois like Frederick Engels who betrays his class, but uh, it's very rare. People tend to think well and. We're all guilty of it, too, to include myself. Like, I come from a petty bourgeois background, so sometimes that manifests itself in a petty bourgeois outlook. Um, I have a different upbringing than, you know, someone who grew up in, like, a union household, for example. Um, that's, that's what we mean by that. But to give you an example specific to Manhattan, let's say that we're doing some tenant organizing and, and we want to go to the neighborhood that's up on the hill by the country club um, and by the, you know, the scenic overview. Like, do you think uh, that a Renters Together MHK is going to have a lot of success in that neighborhood? <laughs> Most likely not. No, it's probably where the landlords live themselves. They <laughs> live in town, right? So, and again, um, you don't want to commit the opposite error where you start, like, I, I don't know the word. I'm going to call it fetishization of, um, like, oh, we have to go to the most down and out area and, you know, like, and that might lead to a situation where, like, let's say you live in a, a city where there's, like, a large um, uh, Latino migrant worker population, and they all speak Spanish. And, you know, a bunch of white dudes go up, and they're not, none of them speak a lick of Spanish. Um, <laughs> they're going to fucking look at you weird, as well as um, sometimes uh, people in those conditions are very, very, very um, uh, skeptical of outsiders because they have to be because oftentimes they're hunted for like by immigration authorities and 
Um, they're targeted by the police a lot. And if you just waltz up in there with no connections um, and insert yourself, then that's bad. So, like, the error does go both ways. But, yeah, I think that's right. Move on to the next. And oh, go ahead. Like, plus, uh, I just want to say one last thing. Uh, like, plus, you have to also be careful, too, because some people are in very desperate situations where, you know, they have housing and they are afraid, um, you know, they're upset with their landlord and what they're doing. But they're also very afraid uh, and don't want to piss them off because if they get kicked out, they could be homeless or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like you're saying, if they're like migrant workers and if they're afraid to get you know, deported or something like that, um, they may have, you know, a lot of issues and there might be a lot to work with from an organizing standpoint. But it's they might not be willing to do anything because they're afraid that the landlord might retaliate or do something mm -hmm. yeah. they could lose everything <laughs> yeah. us we don't have anything to lose i have nothing to lose from this mm -hmm. um no yeah that's absolutely true and that's why doing a proper investigation is so important so that you know who those people are and you more or less leave them alone you know like you, but the only way you learn that is by talking to people and doing a good investigation it's like the foundation of success okay this one's from the section Small Claims, Smaller Dreams. Um, the opportunist attorney named Tony wanted to es they say, quote unquote, escalate uh, the struggle in a legalistic direction according to the article's author. So how did that play out for them? What do, what do people think? How did that work out? Um, I guess something, uh, like I said earlier, um, I mean, it worked fine in the sense of they were able to get people in court and fight for that, but it changed the direction of the organization from a mass line struggle to individual struggle. Um, they used Sarah as a, a puppet or a figurehead as her case. Oh, she was able to waive all her fees, but not really looking at how that connects with the community while sure that's important for the organization to do we should be helping you know every individual that we can but we should try to tie those individual cases into a, a mass a mass struggle which they were unable to do mm -hmm. um yeah that's important because i just want to say um there's something i like to call quote unquote red charity and what I mean by that is like you just um you go out and and they like just like they did with Sarah in this article they go out and they treat her like a charity case um and 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 one uh that's a waste of our resources and time because uh whether you like it or not churches exist and and they do that shit way better they've been doing it for decades if not centuries um and they're just better at it that's um, again, that's not to say that we can't provide aid for people, but what also makes it why I call it a red charity is not only because we're doing something that we're not that great at um, and we don't have the resources for, but also because, like Nick said, the point of doing this tenant organizing and everything is to raise people's consciousness and empower them as political actors, right? So to empower them to realize, I can do something if I unite with my neighbors and all that, right? Um, then that... that and, I don't know, handing people out free stuff like w without any kind of education backing it is bad. Now, that now that doesn't mean, oh, well, we'll just hand stuff out and then people have to listen to me uh, recite, you know, Mao Zedong's Red Book uh, while they eat their food. Like, you don't want to do that either because then you're just like a church of communism, which is weird. <laughs> um, anyone else? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, like I get some of that stuff is really important. Like I know Renters Together did stuff with, um, and I was a part of it um, to help Alice and Gary to keep them in their home because that's just very, you know, it's like you just can't turn your back away from that when somebody's like desperate and in need of help like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, at the same time, you definitely don't want to go too far down that path where you just find yourself helping individuals like pay their rent and helping them like not that saying that's a bad thing like mm -hmm. if you can help them definitely help them but you know where it's like 
what he said in the article where it's like you kind of turn into a social worker and you're doing things that, you know, probably the city should be doing Mm -hmm. the government or, you know, churches normally do. And you're spending all your time and energy and effort into helping an individual while not really going after landlords as a whole. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a uphill battle in a way because, you know, landlords, they know lawyers, they have a landlord association, they have all these resources and they have more time than you. And they have a very good reason to go up against you because they're protecting their, their business, their property. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fight for, maybe just a little bit of reward for one person. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very easy to kind of get burnt out because then you're like, oh, I can't do this for like every single individual or, or what's worse is like, if you put lots of time and energy into something and you don't get any reward or like a little tiny reward, Mm -hmm. it can feel very discouraging. And you're just like, okay, uh, I need to take a break from this for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, um, I agree with that, but, uh, know what to go, what was the name of that cup, the older couple when we were talking with, uh, earlier, um, and you mentioned them just now? Uh, yeah. it was Alice and Gary. Yeah. Alice uh, and Gary. Alice. Yeah. Um, I remember that when we were talking earlier, you said that they actually, uh, ended up being pretty class conscious and they ended up, um, I mean, I know they're not in renters together right now, but you definitely brought them up as like, yeah, these are some people who might want to join us and help us out. Right. So um, the reason I bring that up is because even though you were helping like an individual family, um, whatever you did worked, in my opinion, because they walked away from it, not only um, resolving the issue, you know, the immediate issue, but they walked away from it with a higher degree of consciousness and education, right? Um, and yeah, and it was good to put them on blast, uh, Rodney Stephen, mm-hmm. too. Them all good. Yeah, so you were um, also attacking the class enemy. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was very good. We still had that in mind. Um, Mm -hmm. Because I think luckily Renters Together MHK didn't have as many opportunists. Like I didn't notice really any opportunists who were like, let's make this organization about this instead. It was just kind of, uh, um, in my opinion, it was just a lot of people who didn't really have that theory behind them. They were like liberals who were kind of lost. And like a lot of the meetings were, people who felt lost they didn't know what to do they knew there was like problems but they didn't know how to go about it and um it kind of fizzled out Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's absolutely um that is absolutely true having a revolutionary theory and educating people on it like we're doing right now is very very important um i'm gonna move on to the next slide just because like i said i'm on a bit of a time crunch here Oh, I love this part. The bourgeois, he calls it bourgeois theatrics, right? So he talks at great length about what I call the activist subculture. So does anyone want to take a shot at what, at what that means and what it looks like? And uh, Martin and uh, Hawkeye and Petamillo, I haven't heard too much from you guys. Feel free to speak up if you want. I, I, you I, just, about, like, I just joined it. I was going to say, are you talking about like Twitter activists, like people that are just for show and mm-hmm. and just post it on media, but they don't actually go out and do stuff? Is that, that what you're looking for? That's part of it. That's definitely a part of it, which he gets into um, when he talks about like the social media NGOs. But that's um, there's more to it, though. That That is part of it. It just makes me think of um, like AOC and Bernie uh, back in the heyday where um and like not that these are like terrible terrible people at all like don't get me wrong um but it's just like they put on a lot of a a show Mm -hmm. and of course like it's like that bourgeois theatrics where you know it it might hit the bourgeois um in like a social way Mm -hmm. where it's like you know they see all this stuff online and they're you know they get upset or whatever but it's not like they're going to the masses and um, or like to, you know, unionize unions uh, picketing or anything like that to mm-hmm. get a b- better understanding of their situation and helping support them. It's just kind of like um, 
you know, they go up and get up in rallies and they're like, you know, this is bad. This is bad. Vote for mm-hmm. vote for Democrats. Vote for us. Yeah, um, that, that's certainly a part of it. But okay, I'll get at what I was trying to get at. Um, th- those were all correct answers, but they didn't. In this, in my opinion, uh, if you go to um, and again, I'm just going to name it because it's a large organization. I am not trying to shit talk anyone, but DSA it just comes to mind, right? Um, and, and this is true of anywhere, not just in Kansas, but just all around the country, right? You start going to not just DSA, but it could be like. I don't know, um, FRSO, it could be PSL, it could be Workers World Party, um, it could be, and then you could have other unaffiliated groups like, um, trying to think like um, Answer Coalition, it could be like, um, you, you get the idea what I mean, right? But you'll notice that it's always more or less the same group of people who tend to show up to these events, and it, it becomes in a sense like a subculture, uh, because it's it's recycling and Again, I'm not saying that those people are bad. Like, you definitely need to have, I don't want to call it a vanguard, but let's call it an a, a advanced conscious element of activists. Um, that's good to have. But, like, what, what I think what Akio is trying to say here is when all of your, like, he was talking about how they put on um, a presentation about landlords and stuff and who showed up. It was all the same people that are just members in eight different organizations, right, always showing up uh, for each other's stuff. So it was kind of like, completely isolated from the masses and I like to think of it as like okay if I just go pick an uber and you know a random person comes up in my uber driver and I get in the vehicle and we start talking and I say oh I asked them about um renters together Manhattan do you know anything about that I don't mean no offense but I think they're probably gonna be like well no what the hell is that um and, and in my opinion if that's the case um, call it like a form of uh, social investigation polling technique if you want but yeah, if like the random Uber driver, the random uh, clerk at the grocery store, the random um, cashier at the gas station or waitress or, wait, you know, whatever, right? Um, if you go up to one of them and, and, and just like, hey, what do you know about this? And they're like, who the hell is that? Or I don't really know, I don't really care for them. Uh, that probably tells me you might be getting insulated in this subculture. Um, now compare that in other countries, like back in the day before the Russian Revolution, you could go to any peasant in Russia and say, oh, do you know of the communist, uh, the Bolsheviks? Can I make a comment? Yeah, go ahead. I think that, like, most every single party, like, socialist slash communist party in this country, you could consider that as a subculture. Like, if you go up to any random person and say, hey, you know what uh, CPUSA, or do you know what the kansas socialist book club is like mm-hmm. they're not gonna know like what that is like nobody's gonna like if you just go up to some random person on the side of the street like so by like what you're saying like this this is all like a subculture mm-hmm. um yeah no that that's true to an extent and that's something we got to improve on um but what's cool about it if, at least speaking for the book club is like you'll see if you go in the introductions there's random people who just show up and they're like, I saw your flyer laying around and I sounded interesting, so I wanted to join. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, no, that's a valid criticism. There's a lot of, uh, yeah, kind of insulation in this group. Um, I think that sometimes it, it has to start that way sometimes, mm-hmm. um, just like as a little subculture. Um but yeah, you definitely don't want to like keep it that way mm-hmm. where it's just like you and your friends are just you're preaching to the choir and you just post stuff online at landlords because it, it does take a lot of work to go out and actually talk to people mm-hmm. um, and do that actually effectively. Um, but yeah, um, and I think because before I joined Renters Together, they were doing a lot of stuff on educating renters. And a lot of it was made up of students. And I think they were students who, uh, because particularly students are more well off than the average renter because they come from a wealthy family. I mean, particularly for going to school, um, more than likely, of course, this doesn't apply to everybody, but like more than likely your family is well enough, well off enough to support you to go to college. Mm. So, um, that was a little bit different there too. And I think or it's a little bit different than um, actually working with rent, real renters out there. Um, 
who, you know, they don't have that support behind them. And it just kind of seemed like they weren't going out to those renters. It was kind of like they were sticking with students because students, you know, a lot of them come up here and they've never rented before or signed a contract and they didn't know any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, they didn't really challenge. uh, It was just like reformism. It's like help educate tenants. And then maybe there's like a law or two or regulation that we can put in there Mm -hmm. um, to try to fix this. Yeah, I agree with that. And um, yeah, anyone else have any comments on this? Um, I think maybe I'd like to add. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I'm not uh, saying that it's like bad. That like, well, I'm not saying that like. Oh, well, I think I'm more. I think maybe I just have an issue with with you. F- with with the how it is that you frame like okay it's a subculture, mm-hmm. but like it's all, I mean the whole thing is like a subculture like we're like we're not the establishment like we're not mm-hmm. we're not the people who are, are the ones that are have state power right I mean it, it you know it starts off small like it's it doesn't like it doesn't. Like we, we don't have to be like everywhere right now mm-hmm. because of course it's just going to start out small. So it's, it, I don't think that that's like a bad thing. Yeah. Like, and if it is said, okay, we're just like a little subculture. Mm-hmm. But the point is to like expand our reach. Yes. Yeah. That, I exactly agree with that. Um, and like I said, you know, um, maybe I sound, maybe I came off too harsh in my criticism, but yeah. It is always going to be part of a small group of a subculture who starts things off. But the point is, once you get it off the ground, if you're if if the only people who are coming to your events are your fellow activists in the same subculture, that suggests you might be making an error. That's that's the point I was trying to make. Um, So I apologize if I came off a little too harshly in my criticism of that. Yeah, that makes sense. Like there should you like groups should be trying to get more people like especially on um, socialist groups which are concerned with like tenants and workers but i mean you know if same if the same groups of people like that usually come sh- keep showing up that like i think that's more of um people who might be more like devoted to keeping like the interests of the party going and like to spread propaganda mm-hmm. around Okay, I noticed you were on unmuted. Did you have something you want to say? So, um, sort of, so you all brought up a good point earlier about how there's sort of like the most disenfranchised tenants are going to have the biggest problems actually attacking, attaching with this group because they'd probably be the most scared to um, join it in fear of retribution. Mm-hmm. So, I think that there should probably in order to sort of increase the outreach and sort of increase the uh, ability for this kind of idea to continue, there should be a plan for how to convert people who, like, don't have a problem. Like, um, like with the whole West Hills, um, I think that there should kind of, like, they may not have the same sort of problems, but I think that there should be a conceded effort to try to convert them and try to get them to understand, hey, the problem. So how exactly how exactly do you think that could be done? Because I think that it's necessary to get people who are in the position where they could take more radical steps. Um, that's a very good question. That's a really good question. Um, how, um, yeah, let me think about it. So Basically, in my opinion, oh no, I've talked enough. Does anyone else want to take a shot at that? Can you uh, restate like the question? I would, I would actually like to hear your analysis, Justin, if you don't no. mind. Okay, so let me restate the question, and then and then Hawkeye, tell me if I got it right or wrong, if I missed anything. I believe what you're asking is, 
Um, if, if it's the case that the, the most dispossessed and worst off among us um, tend to be very frightful and scared of outsiders for legitimate reasons, that therefore we have to um, uh, go out and try and win other, well, other sections of the population over, right? And what you're asking is like, how do we do that? Is, did I more or less get that right? Yeah, it's like if if you're going to West Hills, where it seemed as though the presentation of that was basically, hey, there are some minor problems. So overall, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. You um, can't like the the sort of more disenfranchised people are going to be pretty scared to join, but then these other people don't really see a reason to because they have the financial institutions to help them out. They are living in an area that's not that bad. So mm -hmm. How would you get them to join? Um, yeah, okay, I see what you're saying now. Um, so it really depends, but generally speaking, uh, when we're doing this kind of analysis, um, this is part of the mass line, there's three categories of people, generally speaking. Uh, there are advanced, uh, there are intermediate, and then there's what Mao calls the backwards, right? Uh, by the backwards, we mean, um, I don't know, someone, I'm just using an example, so, uh, uh, someone in a trailer park who, who makes uh, $8 an hour, uh, but they're the most diehard Donald Trump supporter, and uh, you know, they, they, and, or they say comments like, uh, "Ah, landlord, raise the rent." That fucking communist piece of shit. You know, like that's what we mean by the backwards. Um, just people who have mostly ignorant ideas and sometimes even reactionary. Um, they can be won over, but that takes a lot of time and effort, and so I say we ignore them. Um, and I'm, I'm getting somewhere with this. The second one is the intermediate, so that's, like, that's where most people are. You know, they, they generally have more or less, they don't have any outright reactionary ideas. They might be confused about some things, but they also have good ideas of other things. Uh, those are the kind of people that you want to reach out to as well um, within the working class and stuff. But since you're asking, like, how do we reach out to petty bourgeois, for example, or, uh, you know, even a proper bourgeois, uh, there's the advanced, and they can exist in any class, but... Um, they are like the people who are already sold on revolution. Um, now, because we have limited time and resources, like may, maybe f the next Frederick Engels in, lives in Manhattan on the hill by the country club. Like, I don't know. It's a possibility. Um, but if that's the case, uh, that kind of person is going to seek us out. Like, we're, we're not going to have to go seek them out. And furthermore, um, to answer the addish question additionally is, um, like, how did I say this? Um, I lost my train of thought. Does anyone else want to chime in? So it's how to win those people over. Um, like upper that is, middle class. Yeah, that is a good question. Um, well, I don't know. I guess like the first step, of course, always is just like, talking with them to see what their situation is and then kind of uh picking at the the i don't know how to like the right just the properly word these this but you know pick at whatever grievances they might have and um maybe start to like compare them to other people's grievances who are much worse and I guess try to make the case that you know we're stronger if we work together you know we can uh, help each other out with our problems kind of like a what a union does it's, it has your back um, and at least get them to say like hey this is a, a nice organization I, I agree with what they're doing and um, I'd like to see them you know, com uh, complete their goals and succeed. And maybe there is some something they're willing to contribute, even if it's not going out to talk to other tenants or, um, you know, maybe it's just paying attention to what the city commission is doing or, you know, maybe it's just bullying renter or bullying uh, landlords on Facebook or something. I, I guess that's a, a good question. It's yeah. probably it takes more thought and planning. Yeah, I want to let Hawkeye and, uh, give you, a response because we're, we're on a time crunch. I want to let them respond, and uh, I just say I will come back to this question. It might take me a while, but I will. But go ahead, whatever you wanted to say. 
I, I've liked what you guys have said for, so far. It's just kind of like, you know, everyone's going to have problems no matter mm-hmm. where they are in life. And so sort of honing in on whatever problems it is that they do have and sort of talking about those and delving deeper into those and sort of getting them to understand um, some, some like, you know, because in all likelihood, those deeper problems are probably going to come from deeper issues. And so getting them to understand, hey, this problem that you're having is probably coming from this deeper issue. I think that that's probably a good idea for planting the seed of, hey, you should probably think about our sort of group joining this kind of education. I like that. Um, yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, I am going to move on, not because this is a very important question. Uh, I'm not trying to be like dismiss it. Um, I need to think more about this, though. That's I, I even wrote it down here in bold italics underlined. Um, I'll get back to you on that, but we need to move on because I got about 15 or so minutes here left. Um, no, we're going to skip that one. Okay. So I actually talked with Akio um, over text, and he wrote me up. I was like, I asked him if he could come. He said, no, he's busy. But um, he did write up a little summation here, um, which I kind of summarized. I don't know if he wants me to like show the whole thing, so I'm not going to. Um, but I did summarize his points. But there was one quote from it that I just wanted to point out here, partially because I was like, ouch, I feel that one myself. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, but I also think it's a good point. He, uh, he says, Communism is not a vessel for maladjusted young people, or if you're like me, an old person, to find some sort of grandiose purpose. It doesn't matter whether I love it or not, or whether I feel transformed or whatever. And if I believe that becoming a communist is supposed to enrich my life somehow, uh, side note, it it won't, (laughs) um, then I'd be in it for the wrong reasons. Uh, Be a communist because it's morally righteous, because the doctrine of Marxism is true, because the liberation of humanity will not happen without it. If there's an inkling that getting the right politics will solve your personal problems, that should be stamped out. Um, that was a quote from his summation. Uh, I thought that was really good. Um, I wanted to share that, though, because I think it's a really important point to make. And to be completely transparent, I also was like, uh, that describes me a little bit, something I need to work on. <laughs> um, anyways... This is the last part. Um, I basically summarized his points. Um, so he talks about in this article, he said um, one of the things he thought he did wrong was he wrote it in the first person, which might not sound that significant. So like saying I, me, and, and instead of like we or us or just the third person, like he, she, they, them. Um, the reason that he said that was because it blurs the lines between objective fact and subjectivity too much, right? Um, and, and, and Akio said that they could go back and do it all over again. They would, you know, be a lot more objective with this because this is a summation of a collective experience. It's not about like, oh, me, the individual or whatever, right? Uh, which is, that's what they mean by subjective. Um, and when you do these kind of summations, so summation just means after you do any kind of event, um, a interviewing someone or um, doing an investigation, having a demonstration, Uh, meeting with tenants, whatever, uh, you summarize it in a summation. And he said that those summations should be extremely specific. Uh, They should be dispassionate, not couched in rhetoric and and fiery language, and should purely stick to the facts of it. And and he said that in his article, he felt like he was using too much rhetoric, uh, too much fiery language, and and they would change that. Um, Upon Yeah, and then that kind of goes here. So upon concluding a project or a campaign, should always, 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 always assess what happened, uh, what was tried out, what factors went into the success and failure, and, uh, and look inside the group as well as outside. Because a lot of people will, will don't want to be self-critical, which is like self-reflection. Um, and they, oh, it was all, it was an external fault. It was the police, or oh, it was this, that, or the other thing. And it's never, never the group's fault. So like when you're doing this, yes, you want to be honest about what was going on outside of your organization, but... If someone's attitudes or, or, or something kind of dynamic inside the group was a cause of a failure, you need to be honest about that. And keep a copy to yourself that's for internal use only. He said that was very important. Um, cadre, so cadres, as you could call it, like activists, leaders of the group, need to be united around a single political line. That means, like, when we're doing this, we need to be in agreement, like, okay, what's, what's our purpose and what's our... Um, political oriented, not, not, not as in like, oh, well, we're a Marxist-Leninist group, so 
Marxist Leninist Maoists can't join, but more like, do we want to approach this um, tenant organizing from the position of like, like Noah was saying, oh, we'll just teach us some classes and kind of, you know, undo the worst harms of bare capitalism, or do we want to be revolutionary in our orientation, and do we want to actually heighten the contradictions and really bring the class struggle to a head, right? That's what they mean by political line there, not so much like what your label is. Um, what was try Yeah, so when you do do these assessments, make, uh, no, oh, we already said that. Um, and the reason that the political lines is important is because it explains why you're doing things the way that you're doing them. It's not just someone saying, oh, you go do this because I said so. Uh, you talk about it as a group and like, okay, we're doing this because it advances our political line. Um, and finally, go out and be among the masses. Like, we already talked about that, but that, that part is very important. Um, cool. Does anyone have any comments on these self-criticisms or any other criticisms or anything that you noticed? Or Yeah, I guess what hits uh, hard to me is the uh, looking inside the group, how everybody did, and what everybody's thinking. Because I think it's so easy to be like, well, we need to do this, we need to do this, we need to do this. And, um, you know, we haven't really self-reflected too much in renters together, um, in the past, uh, particularly around, you know, how everybody else is feeling. Cause I know, you know, when you're working with a lot of people and you're getting people into this organization, um, it's more than likely that these people don't have a whole lot of experience or any experience organizing, and it's very easy for more experienced people. And, you know, I'm always very guilty of this, of just kind of like running the show. Um, and I, I get, I kind of done this in the last two weeks, but that's just because I've, I've have, I have a lot of experience with renters together. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to be careful of not just like trying to do things all on my own and, um, just like move forward, move forward and not listening to people. And if they, you know, if they're confused or if they're kind of like stressed out with like personal matters and they're busy or, you know, just to make sure people are on the same page and not, not leave people behind, um, trying to get something done, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, real quick. I just want to make one comment and then others can talk. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong, and in fact, I think it's a very good thing if communists are leading the struggle. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing in and of itself. I think it becomes a problem when well, communists or socialists or whatever are just like being commandists, like, you do this and you do that, and nobody gets any say in anything. Um, I think that's what you should avoid, but I don't think it's inherently bad, and I'd say it's good if communists do lead struggles. Um, but that's all I wanted to say. Anyone else? I, um, I agree. I wanted to ask if you could go back to the last slide. Mm -hmm. This one. Okay, so could you could you read that? Yeah, uh, communism is not a vessel for maladjusted young people to find some sort of grandiose purpose, so like a larger than life purpose. It doesn't matter whether yeah. I love it or not, or whether I feel transformed or whatever. And if I believe that becoming a communist is supposed to enrich my life somehow, then I would be in it for the wrong reasons. You should be a communist because it's morally righteous, because the doctrine of Marxism is true, because the liberation of humanity will not happen without it. If there's an inkling that getting the right politics will solve your personal problems, that should be stamped out. I think that that connects with the last slide where we talked about the subcultures and mm -hmm. like AOC and Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. At first, I thought that this was saying something else, but now that you reread it and now like that I'm hearing it again, mm -hmm. that sounds like that sounds like it's describing like like edge lord people on Twitter who like put a bunch of like like um shit on their profile picture like like just call themselves a bunch of names mm -hmm. like and like stalinist trotskyist and they have like eight different flags of countries they never visited yeah 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 that that's what this reminds me of like yes. it's just people who are not serious at all and just 
I, I thought at first that this was trying to say that like communism isn't about like improving your um your like personal life because what I was gonna say was if it said that I was gonna say then well I mean if I'm a communist or if I'm a socialist I want to improve my environment because mm -hmm. that's going to improve my own life yes but I thought that that's what I thought that it was saying that that communism is not about improving your own life. Mm -hmm. But now that you reread it, it, it says the meaning now is more clear. Yeah, that's, that's good. I'm, I'm glad that you're able to uh, clarify that. Cause yeah, I'm, I'm, that, that's good. Like, I'm glad we clarified that. Um, and full disclosure, I did used to be one of those guys on Twitter who had 8,000 flags of countries he never visited uh, in his profile. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I, I get that though. Um, we got about 10 minutes left. I want to give others an opportunity to, to issue closing thoughts or whatever. Um, I guess one thing I'll, I'll just like add with the thing I said earlier, I guess I didn't mean like communism shouldn't um, lead discussions. I guess I just mean like, you know, if you have a, a bunch of people in a group trying to do something mm -hmm. um, that you don't just kind of like, ignore people who are not as experienced um and just kind of do everything yourself if that makes sense yes that makes perfect um, sense yeah where it's like there's no problem leading but there is kind of like where it's like oh well i'm not just going to bother teaching you or you know helping you out um mm -hmm. i i can just do this for you i'm just going to do stuff for you and i think that's where like some orgs too in, in general uh get into trouble is they're like well i'm gonna do stuff for these tenants like i'm gonna fix all their problems yes. for them and then tenants are like okay well what do i do you know how do i fit into this mm -hmm. you know well why don't i just stop going to meetings and stop doing this and just let you do this for me kind of thing uh yes that is you identified something very significant um nick did you want to say something okay. i thought nick was trying to say something my bad oh, hold on. Hello? Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, no. I don't know. I was... You're going in and out, um, your microphone. Man, I, I do not know. Is this it's any better? That's much better now. I don't know what's up. What I was trying to say is that was the importance of um, embedding yourself with the masses opposed to just being in solidarity or telling the masses. So, like, we can... You know, like I was saying earlier, you can um, be there and try to support them, be in solidarity and whatever. But until you understand their struggle or allow them to speak and work on their own struggles, they're never going to uh, truly be, you know, you will never be an organization that truly helps uh, the working class. Yes. Um, there's a quote here from I want to read. Um, Okay, yeah, this is a quote from Mao Zedong, um, and he says, The masses have boundless creative power. They can organize themselves and concentrate on places and branches of work where they can give full play to their energy. They can concentrate on production in breadth and depth and create more and more undertakings for their own well-being. Uh, that's from Chapter 11 of the Red Book on the mass line, right? And I think that gets to the root of the matter, because um, ultimately... The masses do have untold wisdom. Um, they uh, not every idea that people have is going to be right, but um, like like when when Martin spoke up and talked about talking to the uh, maintenance people, uh, like that honestly, that idea would have never even struck my mind unless he brought it up. So like when you talk to just anyone, um, you learn from them, you know, and that's that's a mutual relationship. It's not a one sided like client relationship, I guess you'd call it. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. Got about five more minutes. Does anyone want to uh, say anything else? I'll just say uh, I'm excited to start talking with the Royal Tower tenants, like face to face. Yes, that and is going to kind of really see good. what see what we can get from that. Like what kind of not only like knowledge of like their experience, but getting, gaining experience ourselves, uh, mm -hmm. talking with tenants. 
Yeah. Again. On that topic in the um, the renters together group, I posted some things. Um, it's not I'm not assigning anyone homework, but uh, in the spirit of that question, you might want to read some of the stuff I posted about the mass line about subjective and objective contradictions, because that is really going to I I, like I read it before uh, here. That's really going to open your eyes up, and that's really going to um, give you a better idea of how to do this. Um, but again, yeah. I'm excited for it too. Okay, uh, I think we're good here. Um, like I said, the, the I already found a PDF of the reading that everyone voted on. It got, um, for those who weren't here in the beginning, um, on Anuranda Gandhi, a Theoretical Trends of Feminism, that got eight votes. That's more than double the combined votes of everything else. So that's what we're gonna read. Uh, in the resources channel, you will see, like, Danny, I guess, has a physical copy of the book in Hungary. Um, but you will see here, uh, Philosophical Trends in Feminist Movement PDF that I posted today is really good. And, um, yeah, I will reflect on that question about how do we reach out to other people. Um, went over the, uh, I call it the upper strata of workers and petty bourgeois. Like, how do we reach out to them? Because uh, it's an important question. Um, anyways, y'all can stay around here and hang out and talk to your heart's desire. I am going to, where is OBS? Um, yeah, there we go. I'm going to stop streaming that. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry I was late. I was no, you're late. good, man. Um, you're good. Yeah, this is a mass organization.